Uh, why streamers was this year? Never played WoW and got beta? Well, yeah, of course, because they're streamers. Like Blizzard gave them beta access so they could advertise beta to their viewers. I mean, that's obviously what happened, right? I mean, everybody knows that. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll start this up. Retail needs a fresh start. True. Tally ho and good day to you all, it's Chimley here, and welcome to the classic WoW Guide to Etiquette by Messrs Defcamp and Meldron. In this exquisite extravaganza of etiquette excellence, you will learn to dot the I's and cross the T's and mind your P's and Q's. So sit down, make yourself comfortable, and you'll learn how to make yourself presentable in polite company here in the world of Azeroth. Okay. <laughs> Uh, was was that enough, guys? Is, is that okay? <laughs> That's great. I just made it up off the top of my head. Perfect, Chim. Nothing's official unless it's said in an English accent. Thanks. True. Great. Well, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Have a good one. You too, Chimley. Thanks for coming across the pond for us. And guys, if you're interested in watching some of Chimley's amazing content, a link to his channel will be in the description of this video. Hey, Fucking guys. Melder on here. Well, as Chimmy so eloquently stated, guys, this is the guy. These British people trying to get in there and get all of our fucking subs, man. Like, the EU are already stealing all of our world first, and now they're going to try to steal our subs on YouTube, too. I to classic WoW etiquette. Before we get started, I'd like to say that this guide is primarily tailored for people who haven't played Vanilla WoW before, or who are coming back after a very long time. If you're playing retail, you may not be used to this type of etiquette that's in Vanilla WoW. Alright, yeah. This version of the game has a lot of social interactions that can happen, and knowing how to traverse these social interactions can assist you in many ways and make your experience in classic WoW much more enjoyable. In this guide, you'll learn how to present yourself in the world of Azeroth, both by yourself out in the world and in groups. How to present hey guys, yourself. Death I like Camp that. here. So why should you care about etiquette? Okay. We all know your social standing is very important in Classic WoW, especially on a server where you will run into people time and time again. What goes around really does come around. And the fact is, karma is a very real thing in Classic WoW. When you Depends on how big the server is. Because if you're on a really, really, really big server, you can be a piece of shit and you will, fl you will hover under the radar forever. Like, this is what I used to do all the time in Wrath. Like, I, I think that the best example that I've ever had is that while I had just finished ninja looting one VOA run in Wrath, somebody was spamming in trade chat and I was advertising for my next VOA raid in trade chat on my alt. And I, I filled the group and we did it again. Like we just we just kept doing it because there's just so many people on the server, it, we just got overwhelmed. And that's, a, yeah, layering kills this concept. I don't really think it kills the concept at all, honestly. Get invited to groups or guilds and raids, people are gonna remember you. They're gonna say, hey, this guy helped me out before or True. he ninja'd something from me. And <laughs> having a positive social standing okay. can really go a long way. So if you find yourself being a helpful person, I think that's most true. likely people will think of you when they want to buy goods or services, get in chance. Also, it makes a very lasting impression on people. It builds trust. There are a lot of examples that we can choose from, whether it's helping someone on the road I agree with this. or just being nice in a group. Trust me, it will come around to you in the end. So we can think about etiquette or talk about etiquette in two major game modes. There's two major game modes of Vanilla WoW. You could be soloing out in the world or you're in groups. So let's first go over etiquette when you're soloing out in the world by yourself. Okay, first thing you want to know is you wait for... Alright, imagine this, right? You have like a hunter or like a mage next to you and he's casting like a pyroblast or like a big ability. You want to use your thrown weapon and hit that mob right before the pyroblast hits it, right? And that way you tag the mob, but the pyroblast does more damage, so the mage has to kill your mob. And then you sit there and you don't even help him assist you killing his mob, right? Your mob, I mean. And you just sit there watching him while he's trying to run away and try to maybe de-aggro the mob. And then he'll finally kill the mob. You loot the mob. And then you just do it again. Like, I used to do that all the time. So one thing I'm very fond of, especially while playing in my priest, is yeah. buffing a passerby. It's a great way to say hello, and it's also a great way to help a fellow adventurer. Another That's good point true. is, if you buff yeah. them, there's a good chance they're going to buff you back. That's and true. And I know for those of you who don't have any I buffs, do that. sometimes a wave does a trick or just a friendly hello. It's very helpful to buff someone because you don't know if that stam buff you give them can end up being the difference between life and death. So it's a great way to just make new friends and also help someone along the way. 
In Classic WoW, there are many true. quests that require you to yeah. kill quest NPCs. And this may be a single quest NPC or different types of quest NPCs. Now, unlike in Retail WoW, in Classic WoW, only one person can tag him up, unless you're in a group. So, for example, the quest Hogger will require you to kill Hogger and loot his paw. Not only is he pretty hard to do by yourself, but other people are going to need that not quest item as well. So you can invite others if you know you have to kill something that requires you to loot it. This will not only help you kill the NPC, but it will help others get the quest done as well. It's customary if you're going to invite someone to a group to ask them before you invite them. They may not know what you're inviting them for. Just Matt, it's like if you have two people sitting in front of a respawn and somebody invites you to a group and you ask them why, you were dumb as fuck. Like, you were dumb. Like, I never I never tell somebody, really, unless if I'm doing a quest, I just invite them. And I'm like, bro, you know what's up. I know what's up. Let's get it done. Come on, let's do it, boys. And we just go in there. It's like, imagine standing in front of Hogger's Respawn. Some You invite somebody to a group, and they ask, what's this for? Man, I'd probably kick him out. Ask them, hey, are you killing Hogger? And if they say yes, ask them if they want to be in a group. And if you see someone questing in an area where you know you need to get a quest NPC or a certain item and they're clearing all the mobs around them, don't just run up and tag the mob that you want. Invite them to a group because they did all the time and effort in clearing that area and you know they're trying to kill that mob as well. So don't be that guy who just runs up after someone cleared an entire area and tag a mob. Also, there are many elite areas in Vanilla Well. These are areas that have elite monsters that who usually do are that? tied to some quest. These what quests asshole require would do you that? to be in a group. So it's customary, if you're in that group and you're clearing that area, to wait your turn, if there is a group ahead of you. There's only X amount of mobs that are going yeah. to spawn, and if a group's ahead of you, you should really give them the chance to clear that area before you start with your group. Also, I some of these are true. in PvP areas, and if you're a PvP server, you might want to protect those players if they're getting ganked by the opposing faction. This builds sure. trust and camaraderie within your faction. Also, if you're a farming class, like a mage, you may not want to farm in areas that have high volume or have quest NPCs in them. If you're killing all these- no. No, one ever, no, guys, listen, everybody does this. Like, you guys might want to act like you're not going to do it, but whenever you're actually in the game, it's beneficial for you to do this, right? And be polite with people because you might need that person to help you with a dungeon or help you with a quest later on whenever you see them. And you don't want that person to think, man, that was that dickhead that fucked me, you know, two days ago with this quest mob because then they're not going to help you. Like, it's actually a good idea, right? If you're acting purely in self-interest, it is a good idea to go out of your way to try to help people whenever you can. Right. And obviously, like, there's a little bit of trolling that goes on. But for the most part, I think that, uh, you know, like, this is pretty reasonable. Won't happen with layering. You don't know how layering works if you think that. You're dumb. NPCs off, okay. other people can't complete the quest. So just think of others when yeah, you're doing social that. social currency, exactly. If you notice you're in an area where you're waiting for that NPC to respawn and there are many other players standing around also waiting for the same thing to respawn, don't just try to tag that mob yourself. Invite others into the group so you guys can get it done as a team. Yeah, Alright, this so. next one is going to be very important for you gatherers out there, so please pay attention. Many of us have had an encounter where you are clearing a mob to get to that mining node, and here comes this other player who rides right up to it, and as you're killing the two or three mobs that were near it, almost dying, he mines it away and laughs at you and walks away. Yeah. That is not the proper or recommended way of doing it. The rec we used to do this shit all the time, man. I would even aggro, like, there was this one DK ability. This is like one of the best days of my life here is there's this DK ability. It was like an unholy pestilence that a DK would put on themselves, right? Yeah, I see the baldy, okay? I, I, I fucking see it. Relax, guys. I I, I get it. All right, look at the... I, I, okay, all right. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, like, I, I get it, all right? Epic gamer moment. Yeah, it was. And so a DK had applied the uh, the pestilence, uh, the debuff, and I was in Stranglethorn, not Stranglethorn Ram, Shorzar Basin, and I pulled a tiger on top of the pestilence. The tiger then aggroed the DK instead of me, and then the DK had to kill the tiger while I mined his node. It was one of the best days of my life, man. I, I still remember that. That was like 10 years ago. I still remember that. The recommended way is if you see someone going up to a mining node or an herb node yep. and they are clearing mobs next to it, you should wait and see if they're clearing those mobs to get to that node. If not, just hang tight. And if they walk by it, it's all yours. 
Also, if you're a skinner and you see someone killing a mob that can be skinned, give them a second to loot and see if they need to skin it as well. If not, it's all yours. And for you miners out there, if you just need a point from a node and you notice there's someone else around, just mine it once to get your point so someone else can as well. Now this point... Okay. Have you guys ever done this whenever you're mining, right? Let me see if I get something to do this with. So you go up to a mine, somebody else is mining the mine, and you, you go up to them and you're like this. So they're mining, and then you walk up to them and you're like this. And you start fucking trying to get their mine while they're mining it. Because each time you have to click on it. And it's the, the time that you actually fucking get their mine at the same- Okay. Alright, it's not like that, guys. Relax. Why do you have foil in your room? Uh, in case you have to watch a video about BFA. Uh, that's why I fucking SJW Wobby. It's not SJW at all. Like, these are- these are very important things that people need to know. You can't just do it once because of layering? Well, no, it's- there's nothing to do with it again. Um... Because, like, other people are going to be in the same layer anyway. It's, it's the same thing. But, like, in general, like, I, I... Like, this is true. And whenever I'm playing the game and I'm not, like, being an asshole... And if you're on, like, a smaller server, this is really important for you to do. Because if you're on, like, a really big server, who gives a fuck? I mean, if you're stealing people's stuff, fuck them. Who cares? But in general, like, it, it doesn't really get much worse than, uh... Uh, than the way that people are in like, you know, private servers and, uh, you know, larger servers too. Don't get the mine, don't get loot before the GY leaves. What do you mean by that? Everything is SJW. Well, people, people say things are SJW. Like the people that complain about like everything being SJW are just as retarded as the people that are complaining about everything ra being racist, right? It's like, imagine you have a coin and it's the two sides of the same coin, okay? Like, I mean, I don't need to make an analogy here, okay? It's the same fucking people. They're both just fucking morons. Only really becomes relevant if you're on a PvP server. So if you're on a PvP server, you're going to get ganked, people are going to get ganked, you're going to see people die all the time. And it's important, if you see someone in your faction getting ganked, try to lend a hand if you can. It really helps. You know how many thanks I've gotten personally when I stop someone from yep. ganking another player. It really builds faction pride and can be a way of getting to know someone. Also, yeah, if you're getting ganked and true. someone assists you, don't run away. That actually happens a lot. Help the person who's helping you so you guys can kill that opposing faction player together. That's if you're true. a class that, that can bitch. resurrect, if you see someone die to a mob or another player, it's really nice to just resurrect them so they don't let the corpse walk all the way over to their body again. Really yeah. nice thing to do. If you're dueling and sure. you beat someone in a duel, it's customary to say, good duel, and if you're a healing class, throw them a heal, or even bandage them, get them to high health sooner. Not only is it I only say good duel if I win, because if it, if I don't win, it wasn't a good duel. A nice thing to do, but you can start your next duel a little bit quicker. For those of you who have professions where you could craft to provide services, remember to provide fair prices, because it means you'll be asked again. And also, if you fair have a friendly prices. attitude, it really helps to build rapport with people and also create new friendships. It's very nice to tip anyone who offers a service such as lockpicking, portals, or summons, especially for portals because they're not free and they do cost a little bit. And it's also very That's nice true. to give friends or guildies a bit of a discount on what you can make. Because chances are they can help you in return. Yeah. Alright guys, this is really just a catch-all. Basically what we're trying to say here is that you should assist others that are in need. If someone needs help finding where a quest is, give them a hand trying to find out where it is if you have the knowledge of that quest. If someone has questions about their spec or their class, there'll be a lot of new players come back to Classic WoW. If you are a place of knowledge, share that knowledge freely. You can just- That's actually- this happened a lot in current WoW. And, uh, no, I don't want to run out of lols. Uh, this did- I even know where- the, the, it's the three fucking orcs from behind the tree at Red Ridge Mountains. Like, I know exactly who these fucking orcs are. They would just run you down and kill them. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think that's actually, it happens a lot, right? You have people that teach you and, uh, show you how to play the game. It's one of the good things about Classic, is that people are able to share knowledge and, you know, build upon each other and build each other up in the game. I remember, like, whenever I was, like, level 40, somebody did that for me. They were, like, level 58, and they're like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And it helped me out a lot. So my yo, low IQ tips there, what do you mean, stuff presented as deep stuff? W what do you mean? Like, no, this is... This is how the game actually worked. Assist people by giving directions to their trainers or other points of interest. And you can even help people by telling them which add-ons to download to help them in their yep, questing or leveling that for me experience. Too. 
If you see players struggling in the world and having a hard time, if you're able to give them food or water, bandages, or even extra yep. potions you have in your bag, that friendship can really go a long way. Yep. Also, if you're leveling enchanting, consider instead of just re-enchanting the same piece of item, to go out into the world, backslash yell, and say, hey, free enchants, and just try to get some points that way. I never this did way, that. You're also getting your points for your enchanting, but you're helping people at the same time. And finally, you will see people being chased by multiple mobs. If you yep. see this, try to help them. Don't just laugh at them. Who knows? They might help you when you need it. Okay, we've covered etiquette while I, you're I solo do, in I, the world. Now let's cover etiquette while awful. you're grouping. Before we get okay. into the actual etiquette, I think it's really good to spend a little bit of time understanding how to form groups and some of the abbreviations that will be thrown around in Vanilla WoW. So the first thing to do is to use correct and succinct syntax when looking for groups. So you'll notice wow. in trade chat or in world chat, if world chat is available in okay. Classic Royale, you'll see things like this, tank, LFG, Ulda. And what that means is that's a tank looking for group for Uldaman, which is a dungeon. You may see something like healer, LFG, Mara. And all that means is that that person is a healer looking for a group for Marauden, another dungeon in Classic WoW. And you may even see something like this, where it says LF3M need tank healer and one DPS for ZF. And what that means is that there's two people looking for three uh, I more people. I did that people. all the time. They need a tank and a healer and one yeah, this DPS is really basic. for rock. So you'll see these things being thrown around, so it's really good to know what they mean. So you can... uh, is Deadmines being called VC acceptable, Asmon? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, if anybody does that in my guild, I'm going to G-kick them. Uh, Deadmines is called DM. Uh, VC is, uh, there, there's nothing, that, VC is voice chat. Yeah, they're just getting G-kicked for saying VC. Get into groups quickly. Now, if you're a sole DPS, so for many of you, you'll be a sole DPS class, you can't really do any other role. It's going to be really hard if you just type into world or trade chat, hunter looking for group, because yeah, there's many that's other what everybody's DPS waiting that are for. available out there, and you are just one other one. Yep. Instead, try to initiate the group yourself. So type in LFM, be a self starter and DPS for RFD. So that means looking for more, need a tank, heal, like and make DPS your own business. for RFD. This is much more attractive, showing yep. that you're showing initiative, building the group, or that maybe there's other people in the group as well. And when people join, they're just happy they'll be in the group. So I find this is a much easier way to form groups if you are a sole DPS. Okay. On the right, guys, True. are a bunch of different abbreviations. I won't go through them all, but pause the video if you want to peruse these on your own time. On the top are all the dungeon and raid abbreviations in the blue boxes. And in the orange box are a bunch of different abbreviations you'll see thrown around all the time. Study. Th I didn't know what LFG meant whenever I first started playing WoW. And I started asking people, but nobody would tell me because they thought I was trolling. Like, I just started the game. They're like, yeah, get, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I had no idea. And why does everybody keep saying LFG? What the fuck is that? This before you jump in the classic WoW so you know what people are trying to say to you. Now to yep. move on to the loot rules of classic WoW. Now remember, okay. guys, need rolls always okay. be greed rolls. If you need an item, make sure you know that you're clicking on the correct button. Need looks like two dice, and greed looks like a couple of coins, a couple of gold coins, in fact. Yep. And you should only need on an item if it is an actual upgrade that you can use. You should be... <sighs> okay. So... Okay, here's the thing. Usually that's the case. Things become more different whenever you look at BOE items, for example. Always need roll on BOE items. You need gold. I, everybody, and also like, this is actually a 200 IQ. All right, you guys don't understand this. If everybody needs, nobody needs. And that way there could never be an instance of ninja looting that could occur. Because everybody officially obviously wants to go up from a BOE item. This is what my old guild used to do. Because there were so many ninjas in my old guild. And my old guild was so toxic that every single item that dropped that wasn't BOP was need rolled by every single member in the entire group. Because nobody could trust anybody else to hit greed. Rolling for the role that you are in the dungeon. So if you're yep. a healer, you should be rolling on healing gear, not DPS gear, unless no one else needs that. that used to, yeah, that used to be a thing. Also, you want to let people know if you're rolling on a BOE that drops, which is a bind on equip item. And you should equip it as a sign of good faith so they know you're not just needing on it to put into the auction house. Mm -hmm. So if a high-selling item drops in the dungeon, ask before needing on it. 
Because yep. usually everyone will need on it unless someone actually needs it for an upgrade or for something such as profession recipe. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. Plan on reserving an item in a dungeon. You must tell the others before or while forming the group. You don't want to get to. We tell them while we're killing the boss, right? You guys remember this? Those are called uh, those are called surprise reserves. You know, some people like to call that a ninja looting, but we just call that a surprise reserve. Where uh, and then also it was uh, a one. Remember one random reserve, which was like AKA one random Deathbringers well reserve in ICC. That's called being a dick. Oh yes, surprise <laughs> reserve. Like those are the best things about like classic WoW. It's like all the stupid ass fucking selfish bullshit people would do in the game. I, I feel like if you weren't able to do that kind of stuff, the game wouldn't even be nearly as good as it was. Like being able to just like have these like people doing these like terrible things. It's like that's what makes the game special in my mind. Surprise, Master Wooder. <laughs> hey guys, you have to put it on Master Wooder for this boss because the chest is bugged. Okay, man. Uh -huh. Yeah a boss and see that was changed to master loot because you know that something's up someone is probably going to try to take an item and finally guys don't want to say this actually as a tip to you guys because people don't know this if you ever join a group and the group leader has master looter on you know what's going to happen bro like i mean you know what's going to happen like especially if it's like a five man like just leave the group like, if, if anybody ever has master, just leave the group. Because you know you're just going to get your shit stolen. I mean, there's no reason even to think about anything else happening. You should not be able to change and raid. I think that you should be able to. I mean, like, no, it's not going to make a bunch of fucking rules. Uh, what if they put it on right before the poll? Then you just wipe the raid. And you tell everybody, you're like, yo, look at this piece of shit doing this. Like, I used to try and do that too. And, like, most people wouldn't even notice. Because what I would do is that the change would happen in the chat channel. So I would spam a macro that would fill up the chat channel while I changed it to Master Loot so nobody would know. Ninja Loot. It is something that, in the end, will hurt you rather than help you. Because people will remember that you are a ninja and will not invite you to groups in the future. Can't be okay, a bad guys, boy. you will inevitably come across chests and mining or herb nodes while in a dungeon. And if you notice yep. a chest, do not run over and try to open it. The first thing you're going to do is tell everyone there is a chest and tell them to roll on it. And you're going to type in forward slash roll into your chat and you will roll from one to a hundred. The winner of that gets the chest and gets to retrieve the loot. It's also very... I don't agree with that. Like to me, like the way that I do it is I just run in there and like whoever gets the chest gets the chest. I mean, I, they just get the chest and like, I don't even really think about it or worry about it. It's like, okay, some guy's going to loot the chest. Now, if you, if you're going off on your own and like looting the chest while everybody else is there and like fighting the mobs, yeah, that's kind of a cock move, right? But for the most part, it's not a big deal. And if it's a locked chest, in my mind, a locked chest, all of the items go to the person that unlocks the chest. Right, even if it's a rogue and they're just using their lock picking skill. Because that person is the reason why you're getting the items, and because they're the sole reason that you're getting the items, the items should be given to that individual, right? It's just what makes sense. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty fair. Uh just so the rogue can clear the dungeon himself. Well, no, but he can open the chest himself, right? And there's only the rogue that can open the chest. And also it's like open world, etc. Uh, I don't think that you should, uh, that rogues or like blacksmiths or whatever that use the keys should help to, uh, to, to, to share the items. Very nice. Instead of keeping the loot, say a green item drops and say you're a rogue and a cloth healing piece drops, just ask if anyone else can use it. And if someone yeah. does want it, give it to them. If two people want it, have them both roll on it. Also, you'll come across locked chests, which can only be opened by blacksmiths or rogues. Right. In that case, you should really let the blacksmith or rogue keep what's inside the chest, unless you guys have determined something beforehand. Okay. You could say, there oh, rogue, can you open this up? Any green yep. items in there, can you let us know? Maybe we can roll on it. Finally, if there are other miners, skinners, or herbalists in your groups, you guys should take turns getting those reagents or those nodes. So yeah, if I think people do that. Node that pops up and there's two miners in there, you guys should go back and forth and take turns or maybe even roll on it. You guys can just decide what you want to do in your own group setting we had this happen like this was like back in uh it was either maradon or uh under uh, underbog right in like bc i forgot which one it was and this guy kept stealing i think he was stealing all of the sanguine hibiscus and there were two guys that were trying to go for him and one guy kept clicking on the sanguine hibiscus where the other guy was just like trying to fucking get all the loot and or sorry kill the mobs right 
And eventually the guy that killed all the mobs, because he wasn't getting enough hibiscus, he left the fucking group. <laughs> And he hearthed out. He had just had enough because the other guy had stolen all of his fucking plants. It just happened. Yeah, it still happens. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. Okay, next we have class and profession etiquette. Okay. So this means if you're a mage, you want to provide food or water to those party members who need it. If you're a warlock, you can provide health stones or summon people that you're need it. Guy. Or also soul yeah. stone the healer or the tank. If you're a rogue, you can lock pick lock boxes. Or if you're an enchanter, feel free to enchant items if people give you the materials or if you just need the points. Also, if you're an alchemist, it's very nice to give potions to whoever needs it. Tank can definitely use some health pots and the healers can definitely use some mana pots. Sometimes you may think you're providing some things for free when you can make money off it, but you're actually saving time by helping the group and also helping those in need. The next point of etiquette, guys, has to sure. do with giving okay. the tank time and letting the tank pull. So threat is not an easy thing to get in vanilla well, and it's very important to let the tank pull so he or she can get initial aggro. If you're pull, here's how I look at it: is that if you're in a dungeon, it doesn't matter what class you really are, you can probably tank the dungeon. Okay, dungeons are fucking easy in Classic WoW. If somebody is not pulling fast enough, you just, have, you just have to do the job for them, right? And if they're going to get mad, right, unless it's a wipe, right? You never want to wipe the group. But if you can do a pull without the tank, just do it. Like, I do it all, I do it all the time. Because, like, I, I don't want to sit there. Like, we all got there. We, I, I mean, I know I'm, I'm like, all right, no troll, right? Like, if we all get there, and we're ready to do the dungeon, and the tank is taking fucking forever, right? And he's like two minutes between each pull, has to sit down and eat, and mark every single mob, and waste everybody's fucking time. No, I, I want to get through this as fast as I can. And sometimes, yeah, I'm going to pull without the tank. Hell yeah. What am I going to do? I'm just going to sit there and wait for this guy to waste an hour and a half of my time? Fuck no, I want to get this done. And that's the way it should, that'd be good for everybody, right? Uh, angry cucks will kick you for this. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I usually play with other people that are like-minded. So, uh, it's like, I think this is, like, generally, like, a, a much larger, like, etiquette thing out of this is that play with people that have the same goals as you do. So, if your goal was to, like, speed run the dungeon and clear it as fast as possible, then you should try to find other people that want to do the same thing. But if you're just playing with a group of people that are, like, really chilled out and just want to do dead mines and spend two hours in it, then, you know, there are groups for that, too. But the way that I always do things is I want to do the dungeon as fast as possible. I want to get in and out, get my loot, and be done. You know, and that's always my goal. So, if the tank is holding me back from that, then, you know, I just kick him out or I just tank myself. And I have no problem doing that. Just say you're an asshole and quit the bullshit? Well, it's not really being an asshole. Like, how am I being an asshole for wanting to do the thing that we have all come together in agreement to do and have wasted and invested, you know, an hours in, of our time into doing this? How am I an asshole for wanting to actually do that thing a little bit more quickly, right? If I feel like, you know, things are taking too long. Uh, I mean, I'm not being unreasonable here, I don't think. Pulling, you'll get all the initial aggro and all the mobs. It's going to be very hard for the tank to pull that aggro off of you. In addition, yep. really give the tank a few moments to establish threat on who he's attacking. Usually, this means giving the tank some time to apply either Sunder Armor if he's a warrior or some swipes or mauls if they're a bear druid. Give them some time to get initial threat if they're on a bear druid, kick you them out, start get a warrior. hitting them. Also, if you're a healer, be careful about putting heal or time effects or other healing effects on the tank before he pulls because he will only have small amounts of threat on the other mobs he's pulling. And that threat will be transferred to you as the healer so be careful about how you do that also we'll cover this in the next slide about marking but always try to focus on the mob the tank is focusing his attacks on most of the time he or she will have the most threat on those mobs so attack those and not other mobs so they don't come to you if you're a dps class try to attack from behind if you're behind the mob they will not be able to parry or block your attacks this will also increase your dps so just consider that if you want to learn more about tanking threat and how threat mechanics work we have a threat guide on ClassSquad.Live and on Def Camp Metal on TV's YouTube channel. You should definitely check that out to learn more. So, I Okay. Okay. That kind of makes sense. But to me personally is that... Like, if I, if I go in there, I want to pull aggro on mobs because I'm a warrior. And if I take damage, I gain more rage. So I, I, I want to do that on purpose. But for the most part, I think that if you... It's like if you're shitty, you should follow this guide, absolutely. But if you know really what you're doing and you can kite the mobs and do pretty much whatever you want, like a lot of these mobs in vanilla WoW are just, they're slowable, kiteable, and you can just kill them on your own. It's not a big deal. 
Uh, I don't think it really matters a whole lot whenever you're doing dungeons. Now, if you have somebody that's pulling for you constantly and like not giving you enough time to like let the healer drink, etc., that's kind of annoying. But whenever it comes down to just like generally like pulling, like I know that everybody's probably been in a group before where it's just taken forever to do anything. Like people have to go AFK constantly. They're like, oh, I forgot to go this get this thing in town, and it's just a huge waste of time. It's a huge fucking waste of time, and I I, I get so annoyed by that shit, man. Uh, so guides common sense, yeah. Just follow the guide then. No, I'm not gonna follow the guide. Dude. I I I play with other people that have the same mindset as me. We run in there. If I'm not pulling, the tank is. Or sorry, if I'm not pulling, uh, you know, the hunter is pulling. If the hunter's not pulling, the healer is pulling. You know, we are moving forward, clearing the raid, clearing the dungeon as fast as possible. That's always the way that I play the game, and uh, I try to play with other people that have the same mentality. I don't like going AFK or doing anything like that. I like to just go in there, get it done, and that's it. I get super annoyed at people rushing. Well, yeah, I think that's about the same thing. It's like people trying to play with like-minded people. You know, I like rushing dungeons and doing raids really quickly and, you know, being super efficient about that kind of stuff. And other people just like being laid back and hanging out and clearing it at their own pace. And uh, both things are fine, but the way that I like to play is not the way that other people like to play. And I think it's really important to play with people that are like-minded. I alluded to this in the previous slide, but you want to follow the kill order if you're a DPS class. Now, the most common marking convention is the tank will mark who they want killed first. People like you, McConnell, are the reason why we have dungeons the way they are now. Just because I like doing the runs quickly doesn't mean that I want to have speed integrated into the game as a mechanic. Nobody wants to go into a dungeon and waste three hours like nobody goes into the dungeon and says how much time can i waste in this dungeon everybody wants to clear it in a a, a, a quick manner right they, they want to clear the dungeon quickly and that being said of course people are going to try to like want to make things go faster it doesn't mean that's why Mythic Plus is in the game. I, I don't even like the way that it is, man. I, I don't like the meta of speedrunning being integrated into the game. I, I like it being a separate meta game that players decide to do on their own rather than actually being moved into the actual game environment. Think you left... Yeah, yeah no, McConnell, he can get mad all he wants, right? But that's the fucking truth. Like, he, he might be afraid of saying that, but uh, there it is. Time locking is now plus five key. Takes way too long and it really isn't fun. Yeah, I know. First with a skull, who they want killed second with an X, who they want sheeped by a mage with a moon, and who they want trapped by a hunter with a square. Now this can change depending on the tank, but this is usually the most common marking convention. Also the diamond yep. triangles can be used for different things like fear, or sleep and banish. That really can change. The tank will tell you what each mark means, or at least they should. Following this kill order will ensure that the tank and healer have less pressure on themselves, meaning that the tank will have to worry less about who he's attacking and when, and the healer will have to worry about healing less people people so it really helps the group as a whole another thing guys is that if you see that a mob's getting close to death don't just switch to the next target make sure that target goes down and dies because they may have mechanics that could hurt the tank or the healer even at low health so make sure you kill mobs before you move on to the next one also skull is your main target x is your second target the square is the uh trap moon is sheep star is sap i forgot what people did like this red fucking circle for i usually this is like the third kill target this is seduce or any sort of like a, uh, you know, fear or anything like that. And this right here is banish, sleep, or wavern sting. Condom? Yeah, well... Wait, was I say red? Okay, well, it's orange. You guys know what I mean. Orange is seduce? Yeah, I forgot what people use. Orange was for roots? I thought people used the, uh, the green triangle for roots. I could be wrong there, but yeah. So the tank will try to LOS pull a lot of pulls because they have ranged attacks. The tank will shoot them with a bow or a gun and then walk behind a wall. Don't attack the mob until it comes across the wall into the tank's melee range. If he's trying to LOS, don't screw up that LOS mechanic. Yep. All right, let's talk about assisting your healer. Now, healing works a lot differently in classic than it does in retail. You will go oom, um, which is out of mana, oh, yeah. a lot more in classic WoW than you will in retail. That's it's very, very true. likely that you will do one or 
two pulls and half the drink. Oh. Now, if you're a tank, you should be looking at oh. your healer's mana pool very often. This Before is the worst pulls, part. After pulls, when you're ready to pull, God, just dude. make sure that healer has enough mana and is ready to go. Fuck. Also, if you're a ranged DPS and you find yourself far away from your healer, you will not be able yep. to be healed. So you want to make sure you stay in your healer's range. It's very customary to ask your healer if he is ready before pulling a boss or a large pool. You can just type in R with a question mark and the healer will respond with an R if he is ready. If a healer gets aggro, I don't care if you're a tank or a DPS, regardless of your class, help him. It is very likely yep, everybody in puts R in chat that if they're ready. one or two hits would will work. kill your healer or will make it very hard for your healer to cast any kind of heals. So if you see that the tank is busy and the healer pulls aggro, just go over there and help the healer any way you can. Also, if you're a healing yeah, class true. and you notice that the healer is having trouble keeping the tank up or someone else up, throw out a couple heals to help him. It really helps out a lot. Some don'ts if your other classes, such as a warlock, is don't life tap when the healer's busy or can barely keep the tank up. It's just, yeah, I it's think just added true. pressure that he doesn't need at that time. Yeah, if you're a mage, freak out. you don't want to frost nova or ice block near a healer because it's very likely that that mob will attack the healer. Yeah, again, I would say guys, so. That's a bad don't idea. Any unnecessary damage that you can easily right. get away from. Now, let's talk about filling roles when you can. Doing things on the spot or if it just happens to help out the group, do it. So if a tank dies, don't panic. Try to pick up the threat, especially if you're okay. a class that's capable of doing so such as druids other warriors paladins shamans hunters or warlocks with your pets just try to pick up the aggro and move on and then res the tank when you finish if a healer dies the same rule applies if you're able to heal heal help the healer out then res him when you can now i've always thought that was like the main fucking differentiator between like good players and great players is that if you're a great player you know whenever it's time to swap your role and do something different right so like if the healer goes down or the healer's out of mana and you start healing and you're like a paladin or a druid that's always something that i see somebody do that and i'm like okay dude this guy actually knows what the fuck he's doing and uh it's the same with like tanking and being able to kite mobs etc it's like not playing basically like an npc and uh, I, I don't know, I've always, that's always very much impressed me whenever I saw somebody who was able to do that effectively in the game. If you're healing and you find yourself just sitting there not doing anything, fill in some DPS when you can. If you're a priest, wand. If you're a shaman or a druid, just sit there and white hit. Yep. Don't do anything that's mana intensive, however. You want to regen your mana if you can, so just do some minor damage. If you notice that you pulled a big mob and there wasn't anything marked, Throw a CC out if you can. If a mage yeah. can sheep someone, go ahead and sheep. If you notice that the tank is taking a lot of damage and you need to throw out a fear, go ahead and do it. Anything to help when you can. And last, but certainly not least, everyone, be patient and be kind. Dungeons and raids take a long time to complete. It's a huge time commitment. Don't leave after one wipe. This isn't retail well. You can't get into a group right away. It's a time investment. So if you are wiping, be true. patient, try to re-strategize, talk with each other, and try to get the dungeon done. Also, what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to spend another 30 minutes waiting for a healer? Another 30 minutes waiting for a tank? And then by the time you get a tank, then the other guy has to leave? Like, yeah, you have to sit there. Like, that's one of the things in Classic WoW is that, like, even if you had a really bad group, you would grin and bear it because you had to fucking do it. Like, what else were you going to do? Like, if you went all the way over to Scarlet Monastery and you found out that your tank was a moron, too fucking bad. You're going to have to play with him anyway. And yeah, you can get somebody else, but is it worth it? Fuck no. You had to sit there and deal with it. And I don't know how many times I had somebody like that happen. Like, even whenever we were leveling at level fucking 40, like 30 to 40 in Scarlet Monastery, we had plenty of people that we joined, that we invited, and they were clowns. They were terrible. They had no fucking idea what they were doing. And I didn't kick them out because there was nobody that I could replace them with. And it's unfortunate, but there it is. You just said you'd leave if it's slow? Well, it's more complicated than that. I mean, like, you don't just leave every time. Like, yeah, sometimes I'll leave if it's slow and I feel like I can get another group. But other times, I sit there and I fucking deal with it. And that's one of the things that Classic WoW did. And the fact that it was voluntary and a decision on the player's part, rather than something that was built into the game, like the vote kick system, was so much fucking better. Because that way, people actually had their own control over it and they could make their own decisions. I like that a lot more.
Try not to leave halfway through. If you know you're going to run a dungeon, set aside at least an hour to do that dungeon. Dungeons can take up to one to three That's hours, true. so don't join a dungeon unless you know you can actually complete it. Also, if you're in a dungeon group and the players don't know the fights or the quests, and you do, tell them where the quests are. Tell them what the fight mechanics are. Be patient, be kind. It goes a long way in Classic yeah. WoW. Next thing, always celebrate accomplishments while you're in a group. If someone gets a new piece of gear, tell them congrats. If someone levels up in the dungeon, yeah. tell them congrats. It's a huge milestone for them and their character. And when you complete a goal, if you yeah. down the dungeon, say, hey guys, great group, add me as a friend, and I hope to do dungeon with you again. I Just do celebrate the goals that you Hell guys yeah. complete together. So guys, all of these things will lead to new friendships and better experiences. When it comes down to it, Classic WoW is all about the social experience and the camaraderie between you and the other players in this game. It really helps a lot by helping someone else and giving that person the experience that you would want in return. Because chances are, you will get that in return. In Classic WoW, it is almost impossible to achieve greatness alone. You can do it, however, with the help of others. And in doing that, you will yeah. make some great friendships along the way and enjoy this game the way it was meant to be enjoyed, accomplishing great goals with your friends. Guys, before we end, I just want to say a huge thank you to Chimley. If you haven't visited Chimley's channel okay. before, the link will be in the description. Chimley makes some okay. excellent videos. He did the intro for this video. He was the English accent that you heard in the- Boomer WoW players teaching other people how to play the game. Listen, listen, you fucking stupid ass 12 year old kid. We're going to play this game the way that we want to play the game. And Classic WoW is meant for boomers and it's going to slow the game down and all the kids are going to have to relax and learn what the fuck they need to do. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, a 20 minute guy, you're goddamn right. Beginning, he makes some excellent videos exploring the music of WoW and he even does a podcast. So head over to Chimney's channel, the link will be in the description. If you like this type of content, please leave a like. If you enjoy this type of videos we make here, including the guides and the podcasts we do, including Def Talk, which is a podcast you listen to on SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and iTunes, consider subscribing because we have a lot more guides coming and a lot more content for the community. The links for all those things will be in the description. This guide, as well as many others, will be available on ClassicWoW.live. ClassicWild.live is an excellent resource for the ClassicWild community, so if you haven't, head on over to ClassicWild.live. Brandung Media, a friend and patron of the channel, has started to create Def Camp Melder on TV merchandise okay. in the form of hoodies and t-shirts. If you'd like to sport some Def Camp Melder on TV merchandise, head on over to Brandung Media's website. The link will be in the description. And last, but certainly not least, thank you patrons for guiding us and assisting us with I making think this higher quality video. content. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be the channel that we are. If you're interested in becoming a patron, a yeah, link this to is the Patreon really page video. will be I in the description, and will also be a clickable link at the end of the video. Thanks everyone, keep on keybinding and grinding, and we hope to see you in Classic Azeroth. Yeah, that was great. Like, honestly, that video was fucking great. Everything about it was good. Uh, I, I'm, like, we need to see more videos like this, of these people. I, I feel like it's really important for the people that are playing, uh, what do you call it? <sighs> for, the, for the people that are playing the game, and they don't understand how the game is supposed to work. It's really important that people make these videos and they're able to bring these new players up to speed. And that's really what Classic WoW is all about whenever you think about it. It's about trying to build people up and it's about the community. And these videos are, you know, for a lot of us, probably very rudimentary. You know, a lot of people already know about this kind of stuff. But there are people out there that don't. And I think the fact that you're able to get those people together and, you know, make something for those people is really important. And it, it's great. Uh, are there macros in Classic? Yes, there are. Yes, there are macros in Classic. Uh, when Zoomers need to be told manners, we just add them. No, it's not even that. Um, okay, let, let's go down. All right, we'll, we'll watch one more video. And then after that, I think we can try to do, we can try to do, um, what do you call it? Dr. Weevil. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, I, I'm thinking about this, but I mean, we're going to get as many people as we possibly fucking can. So let me say this right now. If you want to do Dr. Weevil, if you want to actually attempt to kill this boss again, I need everybody to get on and be ready for this. We probably need the entire population of the beta servers. Yes, all five or six people, right? Yes, we need everybody on. Uh, why not just bring Taremus to Stormin? Well, we already did that. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, I'll look at this later on. Okay, there's a new iKit video, Lich King Remastered Story. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I already did. Did you do Maradon? No, we haven't done Maradon yet. 
Uh, go to Twitter and uh, tell Blizzard that Classic Beta is dead. Okay, we'll, we'll do the we'll do your belly. Should video. I bother with just a second? Let me pause this real quick and read these. You should start a podcast. I already do that. I do all craft. It's, it's fine. Uh, I'm actually bald. At least you have hair, Asmon. Don't listen to him. Thanks for watching. Meldron, thank you very much for the 500 bits. I appreciate that, man. And uh, hey, dude, I'm well on my way. Don't worry about it. Don't do it. Yeah, okay. Right, here we go. Tell them to invite me to the beta. No, they really need to invite more people into the beta. Like, I'm going to say this right now. I've said it 100 more times. Uh, 100 times before, I'll say it 100 times from now. They need to invite more people into the beta. Right now, there's just simply not enough people in the beta for a while. And I don't know what they need to do, but it needs to happen somehow. And I don't really know exactly what they need to do, but um, it's... Uh, I, I don't know. It's very unfortunate. Okay, just give, give me one second. All right. Uh, how long do you think it'll take you to get level 60? Probably 10 days. I'm expecting it to be that much. Invite me to the beta. Should I actually make a tweet about it? Should I do it right now? If I, if I do this tweet, like... Okay, you know what? I will. Uh, I, I will make a tweet about the beta. Even though I've done it before, I'll do it again. Okay, just one second. Let me open this up, and uh, I'll do the tweet. Blizzard. Please add more people to the classic beta. Most people have already stopped playing and it's dead. I need people to do things with at Blizzard CS Warcraft devs. Okay, let's see. What else? Is this good? Um, don't say def. No, no, this is it. Dear Blizzard. Okay, yeah, dear Blizzard. I like that. Okay. It's a little selfish. What do you mean? Your tweet's a little selfish, man. Of course. What do you want me to put on there instead? Dear Blizzard. Hey, it's me again. It's your boy Asmongold. Blizzard, I know that things have been rough between us, but I need you to know that Classic Beta is fucking dead. This shit is dead. We, the community, need you to invite at least 2,000 more people. That way we can all have fun and we can all enjoy how great Classic is. Okay, uh, so that's probably not going to work. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Blizzard, all right. So, I, I, I think this tweet isn't really that good, man. I'm sorry to say two more people. Well, no, I just didn't know what I was going to write. Uh, I'm thinking what I should go with here, man. Uh, really kind of decide. I, I'm thinking, okay? Just say the community needs you to step in and step up, invite some more people, at least a few thousand, so we can get the ball rolling and get more people to enjoy the game. Don't say, okay. don't say shit like, Oh, I need you to do this because I'm not able to. Do okay, my okay, 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 okay. All right. You so, understand? hey, it's me again. It's your boy Asmongold. What should I type after that? Huh? Well, just, just say it again. Okay, well, no, because I had to fucking, I had to r delete. I forgot what you said. Well, look, they know it's you. You don't need that part. Okay, you can just take that art out. Actually. Okay, it's me again. All right. Okay, use the word. Just say, use this, say, Blizzard, I implore you to invite more people to the fucking beta. We really need it. The community needs it. Impl not employ, you fucking retard. Implore. I M P L O R E. Um, community needs it. Uh, let's see. What else is there? Okay. Um, the community needs it. Uh, everyone needs it. 
Everyone needs it. Uh, let's see. The servers are getting a bit sparse. Wait, I thought that's how you spell sparse. Okay, uh, a bit, a bit barren. Uh, please give more people the opportunity to play the opportunity to test, to test, test, test the game. Test. Yeah, test. yeah, because they're, they're going to test the game. Okay, that's fine. Um, You uh, typed implode, not... What do you want to do? Blow okay. things up or get people in the game? Both, actually. Uh, let, let's see. In game. Uh, dear Blizzard, hey, it's me again. I implode, implore you to invite more people to the beta. I need it. The community needs it. Everyone needs it. The servers are getting a bit barren. Please give people more people the opportunity to test the game. And say, with love. Uh, uh. With love. Okay, um... I, 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 I don't know, like, alright, how about this? Does that look good? Looks good to me. You got 16 more characters there that you can use. Okay, what should I last the last uh, last 16 characters? Uh uh hashtag unban McConnell on Twitter. Okay, it's not gonna fit. Alright, fuck it. Just just tweet it out. Okay, let's go. We're tweeting it. There we go. It's sent. Let's see what people are gonna say. Hopefully this is gonna work, guys. I want I want it. Can I get some thank yous, by the way? Can I get some thank yous for saving classic WoW and saving the beta? Because uh, obviously that's what I've just done and uh, I, I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me and uh, Yeah, you're welcome guys. You're welcome. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Just give me one second I've got to open this up off stream just in case The fuck is this cat Danny? They trying to be crate The fuck does that even mean? Just a second. All right. There's my tweet. All right, everybody go ahead and follow my uh Follow my thing, all right? There you go. Go fuck. Yeah, create. I don't even get that, man. Is this like? Is this like a Russian meme or something? It, it's got to be a Russian meme. Don't bother, Blizzard. Eight point two is going to kill Classic. Damn. Well, fuck you, Dan. No, it's not. Go back to playing football. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know shit yeah, about WoW. Fuck you, Dan. Football. <laughs> Fantasy football, Jesus Wait, fantasy? Christ. Is that even playing the real game? Oh my no. god, dude. Give me Who a fucking, fucking break, dude. fantasy games? You gotta get Fuck a piece you. of paper out and write the shit <laughs> down? Oh my god. Dude. He's writing down if the ball's gonna go across the field, dude. Jeez. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. It's a little bit too much. Wow, it's actually really good. Have you seen this before? Yeah. yeah That's actually really great. That. God damn. Yeah, it's a really good one. I'm gonna yeah. give that a like. Holy shit. Can I have it, please? Please, Blizzard. Thank you. You're the man, Asmon. Yeah, I remember. That's whenever I got my the helmet. I, that was fucking great. Okay, champ. Make Azeroth... Uh, yes, please. He's right, you know. Okay. Now it's a meme from 2008. That's a good idea. I think this is a good idea as long as the new invites are for streamers. That's true, actually. It's a really good idea. Yeah, that, that's very, very true. Uh, fuck you, Rich. Yeah, only this is a streamer-only beta, if you guys didn't know this already. Uh, based Rich? Yeah, exactly. What's this right here? Bald man speaks the truth. Okay, we've got that right there. Invite us, Blizzard. We'll sub for beta access. I'm so sorry to hear that, Stan. <laughs> I, 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 you don't, don't, do not give them any idea. <laughs> you, see, you see that picture playing BFA? Uh, playing wait, classic. Ah. Wait, what is that, dude? What do you mean? Refresh it. Refresh. Okay, okay. It's, right. it's got the face where you were on the ram and you were like, oh. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, remember that, dude? Yeah, dude. Look at that. Look at my hair, dude. The bottom. I look like shit. 
I look like a fucking, I look like a cartoon villain. Like, I, I genuinely look like dog shit in that picture, man. I don't even know if I want to use that. Like, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to copy strike that picture. Holy shit, that's so bad.